Boom, boom. Boom, boom. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Sophia Azran, welcome. Five, four, three, two, one, blast off. Welcome to the 61st episode of the Hug One Startup Podcast slash the Korea Podcast. Well, screw it. Welcome to the 61st episode of the Korea Podcast. I've renamed it last time. I'm still on the old Hug One Startup Podcast mode. Um, actually, it's a lot easier, I think, to find the Korea Podcast on, on YouTube from what I've seen than the Hug One Startup Podcast. Uh, the Korea Startup Podcast has been in existence for 61 episodes now in the former life. It used to be the Hagwon Startup Podcast. Um, in any case, it is a podcast that deals with anything and everything to do with South Korea, in South Korea, um, with running Hagwons or businesses uh, that are language schools, language schools, um, private language schools, as well as Gombobangs, which are smaller versions thereof. Um, and anything else related to South Korea in general. So if you are here for the first time right now, or if you're watching the video after it was recorded and posted, then make sure to hit that subscribe button, like the video. Um, if you have any questions in the meantime, while, I, while the video is uh, being fed live to you um, about Korea or about hug ones here in South Korea, language schools in South Korea, please don't hesitate to ask me any questions. Um, if you have any questions um, watching while you're watching the video after it, it was uploaded, uploaded to um, after the streaming is done, then please make sure to either leave me a comment in the comment section below or you can contact me through one of the Facebook groups. There is a uh, Living Korea channel Facebook group um, as well as a Facebook page. There is a difference between those two. Um, and that wasn't clear to me until recently. Um, I read up on it. Uh, Facebook pages are <clears throat> meant for businesses, for public uh, figures. So they're a lot more official, so to speak. A lot less accessible to, to people just stopping by. Uh, Facebook groups, on the other hand, are a lot more um, intimate, the community that is invited to a Facebook group is a thing can be a closed one. Uh, a page I think cannot be a private. You cannot privatize a, a page, Facebook page. Uh, whereas group can be made private and you can, you know, basically not have it show up on Facebook at all on the listings unless you want it to. Um, but anyway, there both of those are there, Living Korea uh, page and Living Korea group. Um, if you have any specific questions, you can message me through there. Privately, you can find me there. Um, yeah. Today, uh, I was hoping, if you notice, the, um, the thumbnail has a big question mark. There was initially a face of a person that was supposed to be <clears throat> here on the podcast with me, uh, the guest. But unfortunately, that didn't pan out. Um, I don't know why exactly. I think uh, what happened was uh, he's located, well, he's from, well, he's an American fella living in South Korea for about a decade now. Um, presently, he's located in the States in Houston, Texas. Um, and when I was talking to him last time <clears throat> and uh, when I messaged him earlier today, I completely forgot to mention to him, um, or both of us, I think, forgot to kind of understand the time difference. Slipped my mind. Um, and so right now for him, it's 8 a.m. Um, you know, he's stuck in the States, uh, whether, whatever the reason is, I didn't even get the chance to find out why. Um, so it would have been cool to have him here and talk trash. That was the initial uh, intention of this, to be a trash talking. We're gonna talk trash about cities, talk trash about Houston, talk trash about Winnipeg and all kinds of other stuff. Um, and the reason, um, okay, so, and, but he's not on. So I assume, you know, since he's on like semi-vacation, he's sleeping still. It's 8 a.m. Who gets up at 8 a.m. if they don't have to, right? In their right mind. Um, and that was prompted, our conversation was prompted by a very nifty video, um, which he sent to me. Um, and that was 
the video by, I forget the artist, it was a song titled I Hate Winnipeg. And when he sent it to me just out of the blue, I have no idea why, just uh, out of last, after last week's podcast, uh, uh, he sent the song and the video to me um, and it kind of, I don't know, made me feel a bit nostalgic. Um, I'm from Winnipeg, well, a large chunk of my life was spent growing up in Winnipeg um, and it's a city that you kind of love to hate or hate to love. Uh, it grows on you. Uh, my mother has been there for like over 20 years and it's just, you, you get trapped in these freaking cities and you can't get away from them. Um, and uh, shit, yeah, and, and that's that. So the song he sent me, I Hate Winnipeg, uh, I don't know if I ever heard it or not. Let me just, uh, I just found it here and trying to play it back. Um, I've got a lot of windows open because I've been doing some research on the present coronavirus. We're going to jump into that right away. I just wanted to play some of the song for you uh, and I'll make it short so as not to violate any copyright laws and not to crash um, the present f uh, live feed, which I may be doing by playing this. You know what, maybe I'll stop that and use my phone instead, because if I... Oh, okay, wait a second here, it's working. Transition. Let me just start off this podcast with a little of a tune. Late afternoon, another day is nearly done. Dr. Gray is breaking through the light. I'm just going to leave it at that for the reasons I just mentioned and uh, <clears throat> it's, I like this song, I don't know if I heard it before or not, but it makes me feel, I don't know, it fits. Winnipeg is the kind of city that has this kind of music, like if there was a type of music that could describe a certain city, this fits Winnipeg. It's a city that has got like a very familiar vibe, you know, people know where they are, uh, we're all aware that it's kind of a shitty city because it's freaking cold as hell in winter um, and we all have to deal with it because there's nothing else you can do about about that uh, that type of weather um, but there's a familiarity about it you know there's a familiarity to the coldness and uh, and and just I don't know I kind of miss Winnipeg to be honest with you I've been away from home for a very long time and so when I heard this tune I felt a bit nostalgic and I thought it would be very cool to have uh, Neil on here to to chat and you know shoot trash I suggested you should go visit Winnipeg and he said probably not gonna happen so yeah anywho okay moving on because <laughs> the goal of the play is to be happy and gay in whatever sense you want to take that right uh, welcome to four people listening I think it's just Sophia and I because I don't know who else is here besides my phone <laughs> my other feet on the thing so we're gonna hit it off with stuff that's going on on the peninsula. Um, if you're new to the channel and you're just stopping by, make sure to hit the subscribe button. There's going to be news coming up on what's going on in South Korea with the coronavirus, with the cases, um, as well as what's happening worldwide with it. Uh, I'm going to lower my voice because I get very intense. I don't know, I feel my, my brain races ahead of me and I want to talk more than I can actually produce verbally. So I got to slow that shit down, boy. Um, okay, so anyway, we're going to start off with, um, just have a look, look at the um, COVID-19 coronavirus pandemic website. I haven't looked at this thing, the world meter. It's been a really long time since I looked at it. Um, 
But anyway, there's a huge number of people, uh, reported cases, uh, 1.8 million people with only 150,000 uh, deaths. And I'm not saying only to minimize um, or dismiss the number of deaths, but compared to the number of cases, you know, it's, it's a relatively small number, I think. Um, and I, I, I'm always, you know, to this point, I'm very confused about um, how to feel about it. Uh, it feels insignificant and minuscule uh, when compared to other serious cases of, you know, death causes around the world. Um, and yet, I keep hearing people um, in circles that I, that I kind of socialize in, um, in YouTube circles and on Facebook. So people I follow, some couple of YouTube, one YouTuber that I follow... Um, and, um, and some other Facebook groups, people, you know, mention that they lost a family member to the COVID virus and just hearing that it becomes a bit more, I don't know, surreal, a bit more real. Uh, okay. What's so, um, go away. Can I get, get rid of you, man? Well, what is this? Why, why is this ad? No, bugger off. Okay. Google, what the hell is your problem? Oh, Google, you're not not very nice, okay? Eh, the country's here. Can you see that stuff? Yeah, maybe not. Shoot. Um, the top ones are USA and Spain. Um, shoot. Let me just have a look if I can... If I can adjust this a little bit. Um, in any case, the, the top countries are USA now. USA is the top one to, to be seeing um, the unseen. Oh, geez, Louise. Okay, let's see. Okay, yeah, all right. there's a bit showing. And we're going to go through this quickly and then dis make this website disappear. Anyway, so there's USA, Spain, followed by France, uh, Germany, UK, China, Turkey, Italy, Korea. Dropped down to number here, right here. There's um, in the last 24 hours, I think today, there were only 25 cases reported of the coronavirus reported in South Korea. Daegu, which was considered the epicenter of the coronavirus out outbreak here in South Korea, has reported zero cases for the first time in a month and a half, I think, uh, since the outbreak. And uh, so that's a good sign. Um, that's good, right? Um, yeah, USA is on top, um, followed by all the other countries, Spain and so forth. So... Um, so that's not bad. Close that sucker. Um, good. Uh, I'm going to go through. So the goal of this today's podcast is to go um, through three news agencies very briefly. One, two, three, four, four, four. Uh, there is Yonhap News, BBC, Korea Times and then Korea Herald. Um, and it's going to be a very broad look at what's happening here in South Korea. Um, and I hope I don't close down any um, any windows as I go because there is a bunch of them opened up. I really should get another screen, another monitor. Um, uh, yes, okay. Uh, Cablemo. Here's a title that um, title and you know an issue that that was coming up. Uh, social distancing in Korea weakens as people go outside for blossoms, Easter and elections. Um, people, hey, Kenna, better to be saved than sorry, especially in North America. Uh, they should have mask programs there. Yeah, we do have a mask pro program here. Um, people have been reporting constantly that there's masks are being delivered to their doors. Um, and... Uh, and yeah, it's, as a matter of fact, that uh, I've been receiving, so the city is sending out masks and I think their masks are being sent out uh, national, na nationwide to, uh, to foreigners living in South Korea. Um, 
and I've been receiving phone calls. Actually, today was the first time they called me uh, because we're never at home. And there is always like a note stuck on our door um, saying that, you know, I should go and pick up my masks at the local village office, which apparently they have a uh, list of all the foreigners living within the area because as you know as a citizen or a foreigner visitor whatever tourist you should be registered with the local uh, authority so they will have a list of your of your existence of your being here in South Korea um, so you can swing by the local village office and pick up a couple of masks for yourself I don't know exactly how many they give out but all you need to do is you need to bring your um, your ID um, and you know and give it over to them so yeah, the masks programs are in place. People are receiving masks. Masks have been sent out. I've seen those posts on Facebook um, and, uh, and people are receiving masks. And as a matter of fact, I know that masks are being delivered because people were knocking on my door, called me today um, and apparently there are masks delivered for moi because moi is special because I'm non-Korean. So that's kind of cool, you know. There's a lot of things that the Korean government is doing presently in order to you know, diminish to, I guess, to, to flatten the curve, as they say, right? Flatten the curve. KF94. Yeah, no, I think, no, they're not, not that fancy. I think what they distribute is like the three layer, this kind of stuff. This is not one of them. This is an old one that I've had uh, sitting around, but this is the kind of stuff I think that they distribute. I don't think they give out the KF94. Uh, so it's more to prevent the... <laughs> Yeah, when you think about it, it's just basically like, here, have a mask so you don't spread your shit to other people. But whether you get it or not, we don't really care, as long as you don't give it to other people. Because that's basically what these masks do, right? They don't prevent you so much from getting sick as making other people sick, right? Those are the three-layered masks. So, um, <coughs> the Ulsan Online, uh, which is run by uh, an acquaintance, uh, J J Jason Teal, uh, talented photographer, and... If you want to check out his web website, just you know, head over to Ulsan online and hook him up, hit him up. Uh, he makes uh, good photography. Anyway, um, he posted a video, uh, not a video, posted an article or or link to an article about um, the uh, canola fields, canola flower fields that were planted in Busan. Um, in order to attract people, you know, f for people, so people could go mingle and take pictures. And because apparently people were refusing, um, people continued to go to these flower patches despite the request for social distancing. Um, and so the, the city decided to mow the whole goddamn thing down. So there is no more canola oil patches for people to stand in front of and take pictures of themselves. Um, and apparently, similar thing was done in Jeju. Uh, somebody commented on that picture below. So social distancing, uh, this article here in Yonhap News, uh, weekends as people go outside for blossom, Easter and elections. Uh, there is an article in elections coming up, so that's going to be interesting because I, I kind of read it. Um, but yeah, three things, man. People are getting antsy. People are getting fed up. I've got another video com coming up, so stick around, I'll play that for you. I've got that from some people, on some, some of my friends uh, from Winnipeg on Facebook, and I'm sure that video is circulating around, but uh, people in the States are really getting fed up. And I know that coron the coronavirus and the COVID uh, outbreak is, you know, it's a controversial topic. Um, and it's a, it's, it's a very sensitive topic. It's almost like it's on par with religion and politics right now, man, talking about that stuff and kind of just being dismissive about it, right? There is, it's very polarized how people see it. Some, some are very religiously following it and, you know, think that anybody who says otherwise is just an a-hole. Um, and then there are the, the, the people that are saying, you know, that, that are strongly against the idea of following it and think that it's a complete hoax. Um, uh, dude, I don't know who this is. Kenna, is that you or is it somebody else? Give me a sign, give me a name. I can't read Chinese or is it Japanese? God damn it. So uh, the person with no name says, bro, we love taking pics of flowers. A lot of world has them, ha <laughs> ha, that is funny. Yeah, people do love taking pictures of flowers, man. So, shit, yeah. But anyway, uh, they, they mowed those suckers down um, in, in Busan and in Jejudo apparently, so. Um, And then another Yonhap says unemployment allowance payments hit new high in March. Uh, so, you know, 
a lot of companies have been laying people off here in South Korea and as such uh, allowances have been paid. Uh, Sophia Azran says, at least I am not the only person that was chatting in the live chat. I know. Thank you for chatting in the live chat. Thanks for stopping by guys and, and you know, listen to what I have to say to all the nonsense that I spew onto the public. I've got ideas in my head and I want to share with the world. And so this is what I'm doing. This is how I do it, yo. Um, okay. Moving on. Uh, Yonap. Very quick. This is the last uh, resource that I looked at, so I didn't really have a lot of time to spend to look through Yonhap News. Um, I did flip through uh, BBC. BBC says, coronavirus, why some countries wear a face mask and others don't? And blah, 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 blah. The point that I wanted to, um, to bring home to you was, um, and I don't know where it is. Ah, okay, okay, this is it. Uh, so there are, you know, explanations for why, uh, whatever, some places wear masks and others don't. People have them, some don't have them, cultural differences. Uh, but this is what the kind of what, what got me thinking today when I was reading it. Uh, since the start of the coronavirus outbreak, the official advice from the World Health Organization has been clear. Only two types of people should wear masks. Those who are sick and show symptoms and those who are caring for people who are suspected to have the coronavirus. Um, this has been tooted by, by people all over the world um, and I just realized that you cannot see uh, the entirety of this text so let me do a little bit of adjusting here to help that out. Ding. Adjustments on the go yo, that's how I roll. I, I try to keep my small audience very happy because you people are, sorry, you guys are, you know the fact, the idea like the, the word you people is a very distancing uh, term that is used in the, uh, in, in, you know, uh, in the linguistic circles. So my apologies. Uh, my fellow expats, my fellow YouTube consumers. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I fixed it for you. There you go. Uh, adjustments done. All right. So um, the thing I had with this, um, only two types of people should wear masks. Those who are sick and, and show symptoms. Wasn't it said that by the time you show symptoms, <coughs> chances are, symptoms of the coronavirus, chances are that you've been carrying this sucker around with you for the past you know, two weeks, uh, which means that you would have been spewing your venom onto the unsuspecting masses for a duration of two weeks prior to you showing symptoms and deciding to wear a mask. So, um, I guess maybe the reason why, if you're looking for an explanation of why South Korea did comparatively well when it came to containing the virus here, uh, was because... Koreans wear masks on a regular basis. On an average day during summer times when it's um, hot and the air pollution is up high, you will see people wearing masks. I am one of those people. I am very aware of, very conscious of the air quality here. Um, most of my friends that I know have a, um, um, what do you call that damn thing? Um, an air quality checker on their phone, an air quality app on their phone, and, you know, we check it. And so if the air is crabby, we wear masks. And so do most Koreans, and I assume that so... I know for a fact that many people in Japan do. Um, I've never been to China, but I probably assume that it's a good idea to do that same thing in China as well. Um, uh, comment from Yellow Guy. Yellow circle, sorry, I, <laughs> from comment from the dude with Chinese characters. I think they're saying that so people aren't panic buying masks worldwide. Um, well, yeah, that's one. That's what there's. That's why they're saying that. Um, but so my point was that 
because in Korea people are so much used to wearing masks and I think when the when the whole idea when when the talk of the coronavirus started to spread and people were becoming conscious it, conscious of it it took you know just an instant it was basically a matter of reaching into your closet closet and pulling out your face mask and putting it on and people did it automatically instantaneously there is no hang-ups about wearing masks on the streets whereas in the states or other countries that don't usually wear masks um, there is you know a stigma attached to it people have this idea that wearing masks is ridiculous because you wear these in extreme cases you don't wear these for like everyday situations right like nobody wears masks um, in cities like California or wherever it is like big cities you know cities in Canada uh, Vancouver and Toronto do get smoggy cities get smog and it would be advisable for citizens to wear masks right because you still suck that air in but people don't right and I know if you look at some of the apps that I have and you look at the air quality in, in certain cities like uh, <clears throat> Canada in, in Vancouver or Toronto the air quality gets just as bad as it does here or worse at times because these cities are massive there's a lot of transport and a lot of pollution and but people don't wear masks you know I know for a fact that Krakow in Poland is one of the worst polluted um, cities in all of Europe uh, like pollution is really high in Krakow in Poland and people don't wear masks so um, you know I mean yeah what, what else do I say that's that's that people don't wear masks it's not on a daily regime for people to wear masks because in Korea if you're sick if you have a cold you slap on a mask if you um, if you just had plastic surgery you slap on a mask um, if you if you don't want to suck in the air you slap on the mask so I think most people in South Korea and most of the Asian countries the developed ones I don't know about like the Philippines and the other places um, but South Korea China Japan I think most people will have masks laying around kicking about the house anyway so when this when the shit hit the fan here in South Korea people were very quick to just put on masks and it took a lot longer in some of the other nations to even get a hold of masks right um, so that could be one of the reasons why um, but anyway good uh, another BBC report North Korea wouldn't want to be a you suck Korea North Korea test look at that uh, I cut that sucker off again mm. let me see if this is normal or abnormal can I fix this still a bit short huh demanding mm. bunch hey eh? come here come here mm -hmm. test there you go all right tests is that good that's good okay so uh, North Korea hails super large nuclear uh, launcher test as virus timing condemned so while the world is struggling <laughs> with uh, uh, sway vlog says why the mask if it's not airborne exactly yeah so that's this is this is the part of the whole coronavirus um, issue that I was talking about earlier some some people are very um, get very upset when you start talking about you know coronavirus being a hoax um, and then there are fractions of people who exactly that if it's not airborne then what's the problem um, and there was a discussion um, I was listening up on like what a virus is and again um, uh, a physician I, I wish I had the video thank see this is a good point a physician that um, brought up a valid point or an I don't know sorry a physician was explaining the how viruses work and basically a virus is a non-living thing okay this is explained by a, by a physician by a doctor a virus is a non-living thing which means that it cannot survive outside in the air the air kills viruses okay a virus can only live within a host within an organism that's one thing the second thing was that um, in the 19 I don't know 18s or 1920s um, there was research done by a certain doctor 
who on on viruses and basically a virus what he came came to understand was that a virus is um, is a response of a cell of an infected cell so cells who are damaged or who are infected or sick basically produce uh, try to heal themselves and they produce viruses and the viruses are kind of what we could see as garbage that our bodies dispel so for him th the idea that we can catch a virus is completely ludicrous because viruses cannot be transferred from person to person <clears throat> Um, and this is this was written, and uh, there were numerous uh, a number of uh, tests done on patients who who had the flu, and they would cough and sneeze into uh, uh, oh no, so they would the doctors would suck out snot from these patients and and basically shoot it into um, healthy patients, and none of these people got sick. Similar thing was done with horses. Uh, a sick horse would be made to sneeze into a bag and you know this bag would be placed on other horses and none of these horses were sick and apparently all this is recorded in a book somewhere which I don't remember right now so maybe I should just keep my mouth shut because you know okay Swavelock says here in Spain we have to wear masks it's mandatory actually all this is weird to me hand sanitizers and soap can kill the virus but there is no vaccine for it yeah because maybe it's not necessary right uh, sway vlogs I don't know if you subscribe but if you're new here and um, hit the subscribe button hit the like button man support yeah um, there is so that's what I mean there's a lot of uncertainty a lot of kind of weirdness about this whole situation and, and I'm gonna get to that as well um, where was we yeah uh, North Korea held super large Tests condemned. Uh, so North Korea is blowing up. North Korea doesn't give a shit, man. They they're testing their nuclear weapons apparently, um, or I don't know. They're testing their rockets, blowing stuff up. Uh, South Korea is pissed because, like, you know, how dare you? How dare you blow stuff up when the world is struggling with with COVID? Uh, did you hear about the former North Korean diplomat running for parliament in Gangnam? Yeah, I heard. I heard that, man. Uh, he was a. Uh, uh, I don't know, I just, so, just a couple of days, I caught wind of, a couple of days ago, I caught wind of this um, defector, right, North Korean defector who um, escaped, and this was, I don't know when, but I just saw that, um, and apparently he ran away to the States, um, and I don't know if it's the same person, but now this guy is running for, well, I don't know, you're saying the North Korean diplomat running for parliament in Gangnam. Oh, okay, so that's a different story. He's a North Korean diplomat for... Hmm. It's a novel virus, so no one has immunity to it or a vaccine yet. That's why everyone is confused about this. Uh, I am subbed. I got the notification that you were alive. Dude, you are a rock star. Sway Vlogs is a rock star. All of you are rock stars. For those people who are here listening and sub subbed, rock stars all the way around all the way from Spain man well welcome I hope you guys are doing all right Tae Yong Ho ah is that Yong Ho uh-huh he was former North Korean diplomat to the UK yeah man politicians I don't know it's just the mill like forget politics these fucking assholes they just switch over like if you look at some of the shit that happens in the states like I spent I don't know when I was doing my MA I spent a lot of times reading up and listening to the crap that goes on in the USA um, and it's just ridiculous like literally these politicians and the CEOs or the heads of the biggest companies in the world they just keep switching there's it's a mill you know like if some dipshit in the political office fucks up then then obviously he'll be removed because he's an a-hole and he'll be hired but like one of the biggest freaking Halliburton or some other uh, a-hole companies producing uh, weapons or, or or chemicals or some other shit you know um, so it's just it's just a circulation of shit that happens like at the top level of politics and big companies man so not worth it and blah one quick mention here uh, politics has become entertainment. Yeah, uh, I don't know who is it entertaining for, man. It's definitely not entertaining to see the crap that we have to put up with, um, you know, being thrown upon us from politicians. 
Um, <clears throat> David Tizard has published an article right here. Uh, David was, what is it? Sex, Church, and Cherry Blossoms. David was on the podcast a few weeks ago. Uh, cool guy. Um, fellow dad. He's got an article, a, a comment. What is it? An opinion posted on the Korea Herald. So, uh, sorry, not the Korea Times. So if you have time, head over there and have a read. He writes well. Uh, just a little shout out to David. David Tizard. Woo -woo. The Beatles. I don't know why I throw this in. I figured I'd throw this in just to kind of lighten up the mood maybe, just in case it got too down. Uh, the Beatles handwritten Hey Jude lyrics sell for $910 million. Man, could I use that kind of cash. Oh, the reason why I picked this article was because my kids uh, all of a sudden discovered a love for Beatles, man. Um, a while back, my wife was gone. Lucy was gone. She was somewhere and uh, went out with a friend. And it was just me, Molly and Liam in the house. And I started cooking. And I figured we're going to play some music. And I played the Beatles. Because, you know, Beatles is a safe kind of soft ground that's basically comfort comforting for everyone. And we had a really good time, man. And Molly and Liam both kind of took to Beatles. They're loving it. Like, I played the Beatles at the breakfast today. And they were both jamming, man. Do -do 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 -do. Hey, Jude. <laughs> That's why I picked this, man. That's a lot of cash. Uh, Swave log. Wait, let me read that. I can't see it. Uh, we're in complete lockdown until April 26th here in Spain. Uh, sorry, just a second, because I can't see the entire comment. Uh, we're only allowed to go to the supermarket, hospital, or pharmacy. We can't go walking, running, etc., or even take our kids to the park. So I was talking to my cousin's wife the other day. She called me from England. They live in, in Northampton in England. And she basically said that uh, people in England have, well, they don't have a curfew, but they're also kind of limited to one outing per day. So Swave Logs, man, how does it work? Who's, who's controlling that? Who is monitoring um, exits? Is it like a because I mean that sounds like curfew, man. This sounds like a police state. This is what was happening in Poland in the freaking uh, 70s or 60s, 70s, I think, um, where basically people were prohibited from going outside uh, and the streets were being policed and you were not able, not allowed to go outside. So, like, who's policing this? I saw some videos of people in Italy, of cops in Italy, rounding on you know, kids just hanging out. And these guys, like the, the governors, the police were just going out and blatantly like, you know, insulting the people outside and telling them to get the fuck out of here and go home or I'm going to kick your ass. Like literally their language that was translated from Italian to English was harsh. It wasn't a polite request. It was like, get your ass moving or I'm going to beat, beat it. <laughs> um, you have no outing at all. What does that mean? Like who controls it? Who monitors it? What's going to happen if you choose to go out? Somebody going to come and like, you know, knock you down or like, what's, you know, what's the deal? What's the deal, yo? I'm curious. Um, Sophia says, I don't really know what to say to coronavirus on you. 900 subscribers. Oh, I don't. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I told you. I don't really know what to say. So congrats on your 900 subscribers. Thank you. Thanks, Sophia. Um... Yeah, it's been a long journey. It's still, nah, you know, 900 is great, but we're hoping for a lot more, hopefully with time. Uh, Sway Vlog says, military is roaming the streets as well. Uh, as well as the police. Are you serious? Check out my channel, bro, when you have the chance, I talk about what's exactly going on. I will. I'll totally, totally will check it out. All right, so Sway Vlog posts vlogs of uh, in Spain, yeah? Okay, man, I will totally check it out. I will have a look at that. Um, that'll be interesting to see. <clears throat> so, where was we? We was here. Yeah, okay. Um, transition. Beatles. Um, and so what's happening in South Korea? South Korea is getting a pounding. Uh, the reason why many people, a lot of people, all 
Malioni, annyeong haseyo. The reason why many people are getting fed up across the globe, not only in Korea, believe me, I'm getting fed up with this too, uh, but across the world because people look at numbers and they don't add up. I've added another video as well. There is a link below this video to an interview with Dr. Shiva on, um, on a website called the Green, uh, sorry, the Energy Blueprint. Um, and it's, this link was made uh, available to me by a friend whose family relative is friends with the creator of the Energy Blueprint, who is a very smart guy apparently from what I heard. Um, and he's, you know, he's not a conspiracy theorist by any means. Um, anyway, we'll get to that, but it's there. Uh, the government has said they might extend the full lockdown until May 12th. Yeah. I know, um, which sucks. My friend in Canada said that the lockdown, well, it's not a lockdown, but basically schools in Canada are closed until September. Like, dig that, man. September. Um, in Korea, so what's happening in Korea, um, things are slowing down. Businesses are closing down. People are losing freaking their minds. They're losing their livelihoods and their money. Uh, I know that for a fact. I know it from my own experience, okay? It's not freaking good. So if you're new to the channel, if you know anybody who wants to be new to the channel, hit him up. Mm, help us grow, man, because I seriously, we need it. We're going to need it badly because this is going to be, uh, business-wise, this is like suicide. Number of new songs in March fall, 25%. Uh, like, wow. By the way, look at these girls. They're all smoking hot. They're all new. I mean, young, which is like, you know, but scantily dressed, very pretty. And that's basically the K-pop industry in South Korea, man. You don't see ugly singers. That's how manicured the Korean pop industry is. It's sickening, honestly. These girls are pretty great. But I mean, is that all music is? They're just selling their freaking looks. The music is shit. I mean, it's all pop music, so it's all crap, right? But yeah, anyway, uh, sales fall by, no, the fewer songs produced. 25% fewer songs produced. Um, Boo-hoo. Yay, maybe, maybe the scene will become a little bit empty and we'll start see hearing some better music here in South Korea, man. Okay, Sophia, have a good night. Thanks for stopping by as always. And we'll see you next time, okay? Thank you for your support, Sophia. Take good care of yourself. <coughs> we'll see you next time. Uh, yeah, okay. Bye-bye, K-pop. So much for K-pop, for this one. Uh, what is this here? Uh, the Korea Times. Aha, okay. Uh, auto part industry, yo. Not a happy, not a happy thing happening here either. Um, auto parts industry sends COVID-19 distress call to government. Um, apparently, um, and I heard that too from same friend, I think that certain small industries, uh, car manufacturing industries are shutting down because, uh, because the usage of car sales cars, this by the way, is a picture of the car shipyard as so the Kia manufacturing plant here in Ulsan. Ulsan, if you don't know, is the, has been the industrial hub for many years here in South Korea. And so having um, the massive, right before COVID hit, there was a massive drop in, a, in, a, in economy um, from the Hyundai shipyards because a large part of these things have been, the production has been moved to China. China started producing um, a lot more, um, a lot cheaper, a lot quicker material um, and, you know, releasing a lot more of the ship supply across the globe, which basically dampened the production here in South Korea. And so economy dropped, man. There were layoffs from the Hyundai shipyards. Um, part of the Bangojin area, that's where the, the uh, factories are located, has been shut down. Schools have been closed, neighborhoods have been moved. There was a designated neighborhood that was designated for the um, expat engineers that were um, visiting here and working here. And 
that was shut down, uh, closed basically, and people have been relocated to, to different areas. Um, and so now this is happening, man, which is really bad for the economy in the city. It's bad for the economy um, in the country, possibly, uh, because, I mean, if large companies collapse, uh, it may give chance for the smaller companies, you would think. But I think in this particular economic um, environment, it's going to be really hard for small companies to rise up as well. Um, yeah. Yeah, Swayvlog says, how does China have less deaths than Spain or Italy? Don't they have more population? Yeah, the population is a lot larger. Um, so chances are that the CCP is not actually reporting the, the actual numbers. You know, they're masters at concealing information. If it's not the first time, it wouldn't be the last time to see them lie through their teeth, right? So... Um, Just texting people that are not listening to my podcast. <laughs> um, let me just message them quickly. Get to the podcast, yo. <laughs> uh, yeah, so the CCP is most likely not reporting things accurately. So, yeah. Uh, well, China was welding people shut into their homes. <laughs> they, they look extreme measures, uh, much more than South Korea. But South Korea did most testing and tracking of patients instead. Sway vlogs. That's where, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I was going to say something on the China thing and, and it completely slipped my mind. I don't know what I was going to say. I forget. Anyway, so back to the whole automotive automotive um, industry. Uh, the Korea auto parts industry has sent a distress call to the government claiming... Um, can you see that? Okay. Claiming... Claiming... What is it claiming? Let me move this over a little bit. Okay. Uh, claiming the industry's sustainability is threatened due to... Uh, the plunging global vehicle sales amid the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, it's not a pandemic. See, how do you feel about that? Think about your reaction to that. Industry officials said the domestic automotive ecosystem could collapse because of small auto parts firms' vulnerability to the weakening demand and su subsequent liquidity crunch. The officials claimed auto parts... Uh, and other export-centric industries have been neglect neglected in the government's coronavirus relief package. So corona, uh, the government um, sent out a relief package and apparently it did not include the automotive manufacturers. Um, and so like I said, um, the small companies have to shut down because they can't sustain the production i guess you know since there's no cars being manufactured the smaller the the companies that produce like small parts that fit into these large cars you know there's no more demand um for the production of these small cars and so these companies have to shut down because i mean there's no work right like I don't know. if you don't need any more steering wheels for for the cars that are not being made then obviously if you're the factory making the steering wheels you've got nothing to produce right so, uh, a federation of Korean automobile manufacturers association, KAMA, um, a five, and five other car parts and engineering and research organizations held a meeting on Thursday and adopted a statement asking the government to extend 32.8 trillion won, which is about 27 million dollars, a billion dollars in financial aid to Korea's car parts and complete car firms. Uh, let's hope this is not another way of trying to skim you know, some of the cream off the top of the milk by, by those who claim to be in trouble, right? Moving on. Uh, Samsung's mobile biz outlook gloomy amid COVID-19 pandemic. See, another big corporation looking for a handout. But according to this statement, that ain't happening. So um, given Samsung log 
logged 2.52 trillion won in the fourth quarter of 2019 uh, and 2.27 trillion won in the same period of last year um, and was somebody expected to post an operation profit of between 2.4 trillion um, and 2.6 trillion for this quarter so it seems like they're doing just fine no problemo yeah no problemo there apparently so mm, not everything is gloomy uh swavelog says do you believe that it was an american scientist who made the virus and sold it to china Ah, geez, see, like, that's, that's too high. This is, this is like pure speculation, um, and this is where I draw the line. Like, I will listen to, to people who have stuff to say about how a virus is spread or the nature of a virus, because I think people grasp for straws. Like, there's too much, Swavelock, there's too much of this kind of stuff going on where, uh, oh, I've heard of this uh, Harvard professor who had links to China who worked at Harvard and he took the virus and blah, 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 blah. There's too much of that going on and very little of like, how, how, are, how do viruses actually work? How do viruses spread? Is it even possible for a virus to spread? There's very little talk, like intelligent, educated talk going on. And there's a lot of tripe like this, you know, I heard of a thing, of a thing, of a thing. This is too conspiratorial for my taste personally. And I think people should stay away from that. Because unless you have some solid evidence, unless you have some serious solid facts, you know, then you're left with crap that you see uh, and hear on the internet that's passed on from this guy and this guy or is emitted by these questionable sources. And I just, I would seriously stay away from that, man, because unless, like I said, unless you have some solid things to say and solid facts, I would literally just stay away from that because it's, it's not helping anybody. It doesn't help anybody to spread this further, you know. Um, if you want to include that in your research, like, and you want to follow up on that and actually go through the steps and find out more about this one article that claims to have seen or this to have happened, then yeah, look at it, analyze it, provide the evidence supporting it. Otherwise, if it's just one standalone article, dismiss it, you know? No research has ever looked at one outcome of a test and said, this is it, that's the answer. Whenever there is an experiment, okay, in psychology, uh, whenever you experiment of any kind, in medicine and sciences, a number of experiments are done on the same thing. That's why when scientists conduct experiments, they record meticulously, for the most part. I mean, there is a lot of bullshit going on in sciences as well, but <laughs> so um, ultimately the way it should be done is, you know, a scientist records meticulously the steps that he had to or they had to go through in order to conduct the experiment so that these steps could then be replicated step for step exactly the same way in order to see if the results that come out are identical. Because if, if you do something the same way but the results are different, then clearly, you know, something is not working. Either your steps were wrong, were not precisely the same, or the outcome outcomes that were expected are not what people would expect yeah does that make sense hopefully uh, my friend's been uh, buying up samsung shares yeah um, and there is a bunch of expats foreigners uh, dumping all shares in south korea there is like trillions and gazillions well you know gazillions trillions of dollars being in shares being just sold out man so yeah people are buying but get ready for the crash, man, because I don't know. A shitload of shares is being sold at one, at one time. Expect the prices to go. <laughs> Warn your friend, man. Make sure that you know what you're buying into. Uh, Samsung is maybe, I mean, they're, they're predicting that their sales will remain the same. So if that's the case and everybody else drops, then yeah, Samsung will prove to be a pretty stable competitor in that market, right? So that could be, that could be it. Uh, <clears throat> okay, this article, <coughs> Korea malls easing social distancing rules. By the dip, there is no dip, not yet. Um, Korea malls easing social distancing rules. Um, okay, 
Government will discuss easing social distancing rules. Can you see everything okay here? Is that too big? Wait, I need to like go see myself on my phone, man, because that was the goal of it. Where am I? Here. Because this gives me a better look on what you guys can see to make sure that everything is hunky-dory for you as well. Uh, where are we? Yeah, the government will discuss easing social distancing rules later this week as COVID-19 infections have shown signs of decreasing. Prime Minister Chong se kyun said Monday. When was this published? Where is the... Where is the date? Somebody give me the date! No date, okay. Should I assume it's this week sometime, okay. Uh, the Korea Centers for Disease Control and Pandemic KCDC reported 25 new infections Sunday. Yeah, so okay, that's that's just like yesterday. Uh, pushing the total uh, number of cases to blah blah. Uh, Chang also said the administration would replace any easing of the social distancing campaign with an enhanced personal hygiene program. So that would mean we would no longer be receiving messages from the gov saying stay away from other people. Um, on like an hour by hour basis almost um, and probably get more messages of like wash your hands on an hour by hour basis but you know i'm just i'm poking fun at this but it's good it's uh, you know it's good that the government is very proactive and they're doing things that many other governments seem to be lacking and so i guess maybe you know it's a driver this is something that koreans and korea will will thrive on the other day Samsung is seen as bulletproof. Yeah, maybe. Maybe they are, man. I mean, they have a global reach. And phones, you know, well, I could see that phone sales would actually skyrocket, right? Uh, from people um, needing these devices. There are still people who have work and jobs and they continue to be present online and having a life in their offices and work online and continue to exist financially. Um, and the demand for handheld computers and devices will not disappear it might actually increase as more people stay indoors and more people want to keep a distance and so there will be more people trying you know using devices like smartphones to communicate right so it would be the exact opposite of the automotive industry um, which will suffer as people stay home hardly anybody goes out anymore if people do go out they don't really you know walk around so Fewer cars are used, fewer car cars are sold, and so, yeah, I could see Samsung and electronics to be on the up and up. <clears throat> Early voting finishes, but voters still confused over... What are they confused over? What are you people confused about? What's the confusion? <laughs> yeah, I thought I adjusted. I, I just, every single page is different, eh? Hey, hey, what are you doing? I cannot see you. Uh, shoot, okay, let me, ding -a ding okay. Yes, okay, that's too far. Uh, it's just, the page is just too big. All right, so we'll leave it at that transition. Uh, <coughs> so this is a funny story. Check it out. Uh, more than a quarter of eligible voters for the April 15th general election participated in early voting conducted from Friday to Saturday. However, it seemed many of them were confused by, th by there being too many parties listed on the ballot paper for proportional representation, leaving them wondering whether they voted for the actual party they wanted to. Expect chaos and disaster to take over the country of South Korea, man. People are going to be like, what? Uh, who did me? They'll just have a lot more reasons to blame, you know, blame governments that they thought they elected but didn't elect. And if governments mess up, then they'll just be able to say, I didn't vote for you. I don't know. Uh, and, but it's just funny that, you know, stuff like elections were somehow mismanaged. How, what? If they can't, can't manage that, how are they going to manage a whole country? or district or city for that matter, right? Uh, in the general election, voters uh, enter their votes on two sections of the ballot paper, one for 253 single member consecutives and the other for 47. Okay, I'm not gonna read this, it's not important. The fact that they messed it up is shocking. 
Uh, Swavelog says, working from home, got to go back, bro. Thanks for all the info and chat. Likewise, Swavelogs, I will definitely go and check out your, your uh, channel uh, probably right after this podcast. Uh, so I'll swing by and say hello, man. Uh, yeah, hey, Bruno, is Moon Jae-in a communist? A communist? Call him up, find out, Bruno. I have no idea. <laughs> next. I'm waiting for the... Per- okay, here we go. It's closing. It's closing. What's next on the menu? This is the last one from the Korea Times. Uh, multicultural families shunned from online education. This is kind of shitty um, because it affects me and a lot of my fellow expats here fellow or even not fellow, a lot of expats. Uh, Let's not forget that expat does not mean a North American or a white European, okay? There's a lot of expats here who do not fall under the category of an English teacher um, and may not necessarily represent the same um, demographic as I do, right? Uh, Bruno says, many people both in Korea and outside Korea have called him Call him a communist and a criminal. So what is going on? I've never heard that, man. I have no idea. Absolutely none. Neil Pusan. What? Non-COVID-19 news did we miss? What? What do you mean? Non-COVID-19 news did we miss? What do you mean? Is that Neil? Uh, well, yeah, man. You missed the, the, the tune-in. <laughs> Uh, if that's you, oops, main transition. Uh, yeah, no, uh, you haven't missed COVID 19 discussion. This is all part of it, it's all on the topic. Uh, we're talking COVID 19 all the time. It just, it's a very broad topic, there's a lot going on. Uh, Moon Jae-in being communist, I've never heard that. Heck, if he is, we're all screwed. I don't know. I, I don't know. I mean, communism is, you know, it's not good <laughs> by any means. But I have no idea if he's a communist. And that's, I'm not even going to start talking about that here because that's a different podcast. We're talking about COVID, yo. <laughs> um, the Korea Association of, uh, okay, so this is uh, multicultural family shunned from online education. So, uh, okay, so the Korea Association for Supporting Youth from Multicultural Families, KASIMF, an advocacy group, advocacy group for multicultural families in Korea, voiced concern Tuesday that children in such families may have limited access to online classes, as some parents may not own smart devices and not know how to supervise remote learning for their children. As part of coping with the COVID-19 pandemic, overseas, uh, overseers of Korea's education system um, and educators have been forced to consider changes to students' learning activities. Uh, in an unprecedented move, the Ministry of Education uh, earlier postponed the new school year several times after unexpected infection clusters occurred among young students. Yet, despite the various strategies being employed, there remain concerns over the development of online education and potential disadvantages for some students. Uh, Okay, so... Uh, to uh, alleviate concerns over the education authorities' ability to prepare a sufficient technical instru- infrastructure for online classes, the MO and provincial education offices have provided smart devices and internet connections for students in low-income households. Um, however, some students, especially from multicultural families, have fallen through the cracks of this support program. So apparently the government has provided uh, smart devices and internet connections to students from low-income households if they were Korean, but not if they were not entirely Korean, which is kind of shitty, right? Um, ah, okay, all the news is COVID-19, coronavirus these days. Yeah, well, yeah, which is kind of bogus, right? There's, there's a lot more going on. Um, 
and so I mentioned, I've gone through some of those. Actually, there is news. 25% uh, fewer songs being produced. Uh, the Beatles' handwritten song sold for almost a million dollars, man. <laughs> uh, yeah, I assume that alcohol sales... So Neil Pusan asks, have coronavirus affected alcohol sales in Korea? I would assume that alcohol sales have gone up drastically as people spend more time at home um, and just get fucked up a lot more. Maybe, on their own time. I may be wrong. Koreans are very social animals. Um, most Koreans drink outside of their homes. Uh, they like to go out and socialize. And I don't know the social distancing, man, because I've, I've gone through our neighborhoods here, Mugodong downtown, and I've seen areas that were just packed with people, man. Like, packed! So the whole idea of the social distancing just being out the window. Uh, in Spain, sales of beer shut up. Yeah, yeah, well, exactly. Um, and I've been disenchanted with South Korean politics all, ever since 2015-2016 scandal. Didn't every Korean president go through a scandal? Show me a president that didn't go through a scandal. They're all crooks, politicians are. Let's go back to what matters, man. Children without an education. Kasim, Chairman Park Oak Sik, said that uh, most multicultural families are in the low income bracket. I didn't know that. Did you know that? Did you know that most multicultural families are in the low income bracket? Yeah. So, uh, let somebody tell me that I'm stealing their jobs. And therefore need support for the online classes, both through the provision of smart devices such as tablets, PCs and smartphones, and practical guidance in managing online education. Right now, technically, I am in the minus bracket, man, because my freaking income is like <laughs> down the shitter, um, not to mention the, the loans that I own. So remember, if you're new here to this channel or if you're watching it after recording, please make sure to hit the subscribe button, like the video, come back for more, support the channel. Mm. Thank you. The organization, uh, no, I'm being serious, by the way, yeah. Uh, the organization process that parents receive guidance while their children are taking the remote classes. Challenges arise as many of the parents work and are often absent from home during school hours. Also, many mothers in these families do not speak Korean with native level fluency, which can create communication barriers. It's interesting that uh, the reference is made to mothers rather than fathers. Where are the fathers? If they're Korean men married to, uh, to foreign ladies, um, I guess the men work all day, the mothers do as well. So where are the fathers? It's very sad to see f Korean fathers being so absent, man. Uh, not every, not all of them, but a huge majority. Um, even if they are provided the devices, devices, who can guide first or to third graders at elementary schools to take the classes when most of their working parents have to, no choice but to leave their children alone at home. Mm. On and on and on. Um, Neil Pusan says, did American army bases in Korea reopen offline classes today? I have no idea. Uh, I read they were supposed to. Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Uh, I guess maybe to answer your question, like the, why is COVID on, being spoken of all the time everywhere is because it's not necessarily because it's, you know, because it's COVID um, and, and it's, it's a fear-mongering factor, which it is, but also because it just, the way that the world responds to it has such a massive effect, you know, and it reaches into every aspect of human life from, like, from education, you know, it affects kids, it affects families. Um, businesses are going under. Um, we had to restaff our teachers because we can't um, afford to have the stuff that we were planning on. And that sucks, man. It really sucks. And it's not to mention the beating that we're taking economically um, in terms of our financial being and our ex the existence of our business, man. It's, so that's why it's, it's not just, you know, people talking about COVID and how scary it is, but 
how much this COVID thing, how many things are being fucked up because of it? How, how screwed up everything is becoming, man? Look at this. Oh, shoot. Where is it? Oh, here it is. Okay. The wrong transition here. Job openings plunge in March over coronavirus uncertainty, man. There is a lot fewer jobs being, um, a lot fewer jobs available because businesses are shutting down. Uh, job openings in South Korea companies, Korean companies have fallen by, th by a third in March uh, on year as businesses are struggling with the coronavirus pandemic. No, it's not the coronavirus pandemic. It's the panic that people have put themselves under. It's this weird inability to see through the fog and just blindly follow um, the crap that's spewed by all the media outlets, by all the government outlets and by every other knob that, you know, is too afraid to think for themselves. Technically, some might say, I may not be the only one or it may not be one of them, but some might think that. Um... Oh, by the way, we moved on to the Korea Herald. We we're done with Korea Times. We're, we've moved to the Korea Herald. Uh, huh. Here is a fella, a spicy, feisty fella. A man caught breaking quarantine twice in a day. He's not putting up with no shit. Quarantine my ass, boy. I'm going to get my ass out on the streets. Police said Monday that they had apprehended a man in his 60s for allegedly violating self-quarantine rules twice in one day and were considering whether to seek an arrest warrant. <sighs> I don't know. 60 is like, nah, I don't give a heck. <laughs> I'm 60. Uh, all overseas travelers are required to self-isolate for 14 days upon arriving in South Korea, regardless of their nationality, uh, to prevent an influx of the novel coronavirus. Um, the 68-year-old man in custody who landed here Friday from the U.S. was first caught breaking quarantine Saturday afternoon and was subsequently sent to his home in Sang Songpa district, according to the Songpa police station. So uh, I don't know, you know, it says he came from the States, but we're, we're not, we don't know if he's an American or if he's a Korean fella just coming back, whatever the case. But he's like, I'm not putting up with that. Stay have quarantined my ass. Uh, mm, yeah, okay, so here is what I was uh, talking about, um, Yongho, 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 uh, Yongho said that his buddy was buying, Yongho, by the way, man, your, your English is freaking excellent, dude, let me scroll back, did you say is that, that's Yongho, where's that chat, yo, Hey. Eh? Yongho. Is it my Yongho or some other Yongho? Speak or forever hold your silence. Thankfully, he wasn't infected or hopefully not. Could be a different Yongho, yeah? In any case, uh, Neil says, how many people are self-isolating in Korea? I read in past two weeks, the number of Busan has gone from 140 to 3,200 with almost 2,800 being from overseas. I don't know. Voluntarily? Do people voluntarily isolate? That's crazy. Uh, so earlier, I think Yongho was saying that his friend was buying off stocks of Samsung. Um, and here is an article about exactly that. Foreigners' monthly stock sell-off far exceeds previous record highs. Uh, people living in Korea, foreigners sold a net of 13.4545 trillion won, so 11.404 billion dollars worth of local shares last month. So expect the shares of whatever companies they sold, I guess it's not being disclosed. Um, you know, I'm sure there is a lot of insiders making a huge profits from this information because that's how it rolls in Korea, just like it did with uh, all the cryptocurrencies. Um, in 2018 when assholes were selling stuff off or buying it first and then selling it off 
which inflated the market massively and then ended crashing it and causing a huge, uh, just uh, people losing their minds in South Korea, right? Because of pricks like that. Um, and so now apparently there's a lot of money being thrown back into the, uh, um, into the market, which is not boding very well, man. That's a lot of money. So um, if you are investing, make sure that you are investing in the right companies, man, because uh, yeah, these are pretty big numbers. I think I could be wrong. I'm not an investor, but I know that 13 or 11 billion dollars is massive. Well, it's not. I think the cryptocurrency market stood at about, what was it, over 280 billion dollars? And it went from that to like, I don't know, several million or something. Maybe not that little, but. Uh, Yongmo says, yeah, foreign investors pulled out since outbreak. That's when my buddies were buying up shares. There was a dip in March. Yeah, right. Well, that's probably why. So are they still buying or are they being cautious? What companies were they buying into and where were the dips? I guess if you're investing, you'd probably know these things, right? Be on the lookout for companies that are dipping. Um, cryptocurrency I don't know I haven't looked at like at, at crypto in a very long time I don't know what uh, <clears throat> what Bitcoin standing at and I want to be searching now if you guys are on it if you guys are on top of the thing uh, Bruno last time Bruno provided us with some um, feedback on how much Bitcoin stood at I think this was a couple of weeks ago and Bitcoin then stuck stood at about four thousand dollars they say buy the dip but is this the final dip? Again, spend some time. Don't, don't haphazardly start throwing money around buying crypto or buying stocks, man, without understanding the market too well. Uh, find some, get some advice. Find somebody who knows what they're doing. And let them help you when you invest money because uh, you could lose your freaking socks, man. Um, after resilience in March, this is exports. Man, exports plummet in April. <clears throat> so again, uh, less money coming in in South Korea as exports have fallen by more than 18% so far this month. Government data showed, man. That's also not very good. I'm going to try to wrap it up because it's already 20 after 11, man. I don't want to stretch it too much. Um, what is this next article? Uh, as remote, a new focus as remote gains momentum. How will medical system change? Ah, okay, uh, medical system is moving online, yo. The unprecedented spread of the novel coronavirus in the past months has forced medical professionals to seek ways to minimize <clears throat> their contact with patients in testing while maximizing the scope of tracking the infection. Industry watchers say that the South Korean uh, Health Ministry's uh, smartphone application, for instance, are an applied form of rudimentary telemedicine by allowing people to self-test during quarantine to report their conditions to medical professionals. <clears throat> <coughs> oh shit, really? It's creeping back up to 6-7. Seven, seven. Man, Bruno, did you buy some Bitcoin two weeks ago? Because <laughs> you'd be making bank. Um, yeah, uh, so... Um, expect a lot more things to be moving online. I think it's a good time. When will the schools open? Uh, they won't, dude. Everything is online. Uh, April 20th is the official opening day. I think middle school or high schools are opening on the 16th, elementary on the 20th, but all online. Uh, physically, who knows, man. Even after there, there won't be any reported cases of the coronavirus, I doubt that schools are going to reopen willy-nilly, man. I, I just I get a feeling that this is going to continue for whatever reason or another one. <clears throat> Bruno says, I predict another big dip in the American market, so it should go down again, hopefully to 4,000, hopefully. Uh, my wife today said, man, we should buy some Bitcoin. And I was like, forget that, man. We've got no cash to freaking feed ourselves. Uh, you want to buy Bitcoin? Are you crazy, woman? That was my response without like the, but internally, not externally. Externally, I was like, really think about it. But internally, I was going, what the? You know, but maybe I should rethink it. <clears throat> maybe I should have a look at the uh, crypto market again. I spent a lot of time on that sucker, man, and it cost me a lot of time, eyesight, and money. And so, uh, right now, I'm just holding a lot of bags, brother, 
uh, if I can balance it out somehow with, uh, you know, buying in and selling, that'd be great. But again, you got to know, you got to have your finger on the pulse and like keep track of the dips because you could lose your sack, socks on that sucker. But yeah, $4,000, that's the price Bitcoin stood at at the beginning of 2018, I think, or so. Uh, yeah, okay, online, online stuff. <clears throat> Channel News Asia. I have one article from Channel News Asia. I want to look what it is before I post it up here. South Korea reports more recovered COVID-19 patients testing positive again. I have no idea what news agency this is. I don't know how accurate this is. Um, uh, this is here. I don't know how, you know, fear-mongering this is, but apparently there were some people who... Um, 116 people initially cleared of the new coronavirus had tested positive again, although officials suggest that uh, they would soon look uh, at easing strict recommendations aimed at preventing new outbreaks. South Korea reported only 25 new cases on Monday. So apparently there are some people who recovered and uh, post, uh, tested positive again. Uh, Neil Poussin says, if this ends soon, when will you next travel overseas? Uh, me? Next time I will travel overseas when I am able to recover the majority of the debt that I incurred over this past two months as a result of this fucking lockdown that's happening. Mm -hmm. So that's not going to be too soon. I don't give a shit about the, the perceived threat of the coronavirus. That is not the reason. I just simply can't afford to move my ass outside of the country. <clears throat> CNA is Singapore. CNA is Singaporean news agency. They're like Singaporean KBS. Okay, all right. So, so that's who was reporting. Uh, Singaporean news agency was reporting that there were some cases here in South Korea that um, reemerged. Here's a video uh, that was sent to me on Facebook. Uh, this lady, I'm gonna play that for you quickly. Uh, let me just let me make sure to let me know if you can hear because there's sound of another um, media, and I don't know if it's gonna be audible on on this feed. So just let me know if uh, if you can hear it. Yeah. Uh, but um, and I'm not gonna. I, I can't. I, I wish I could copy and paste it somewhere. I can't. But basically, I think I'm gonna take some of that message and make a video about, um, just so I can share some of her thoughts as well. Listening to the news, more bullshit. Um, I was driving in the car and Fox News was on. And the person that was on was saying, you know, if we have to, you know, push this till the end of the summer. And it's just like, so are all of us around the world in our country just supposed to lay down and die at the expense of a fucking virus that is not a pandemic by any means. If you don't realize yet that you are being lied to about the numbers, about how you're catching it, about all of this, you need to seriously research and research now because the complicity that is going on is really scary. So basically what the whomever is in charge here, all they have to say is you must stay in your house. You can't do this. You can't do that. All of your rights are taken away from you. And everybody's complicit. Everybody's like, okay, well, what, what should we do next? Should we open our windows and jump out so we don't catch the virus? Because we'll do that. So at what point do we say, we need to fucking stand up together and take charge of this whole thing. Our lives are being ruined right before us. And we're all just complicit and in agreement to it. I don't think I'll ever see another event like this in my life. I can only hope that I don't. But the fact that we are all so complicit is very scary. The fact that people are afraid to be near other human beings is is I don't even actually have a word to describe that. You go into the food store and everybody is looking around at each other and moving away from each other. So because 
our government tells us this boogeyman out there is going to get you if you are close to another human being, that we all go along with this. So then when our government also tells us that this boogeyman is gone, then we can go back to our normal lives. We could sit next to people. We could shake hands. We can hug. What kind of sheep shit is this? <laughs> that we... Yeah, I'm not going to play the whole thing. It's 11 minutes uh, and 20 seconds, so it's a lengthy thing. <clears throat> I'm going to try and figure out how to share this um, in my in the Living Korea uh, group on the Living Korea page as well. Um, so if you want to go see its entirety, uh, go there. Um, if you haven't, I think most of you guys have. I know Bruno is part of it. Uh, I don't know if Yongho, if you're if you're on there or not. Um, if you aren't, then head over to Facebook and find the Living Korea page and uh, link it there. But uh, I share a lot of her sentiments. Um, and while I don't necessarily agree with the last bit of what she says, um, or, or don't necessarily may not see eye to eye, a lot of the stuff that she says in how people react, how the world reacts to the COVID, to the coronavirus and, and the announcement of it um, is spot on. Okay, mm. and then last one here, this is, so this is the website that I mentioned earlier, and this is the Energy Blueprint, um, and this is operated with, let me, Ari, I think the, the person who's in charge of it uh, is, his name is Ari, if I'm not mistaken, doesn't matter, it's, well, I don't know, he's the guy, uh, yeah, okay, Ari, Ari Witten, there you go, it's right here. Duh. Okay. <laughs> it's right here. But um, so he's talking to Dr. Shiva, who is not a physician. He's an engineer, um, and he's got some interesting um, views. Um, you know, he carries he carries the benefit of having the experience of of the Eastern view of the human body with the experience of the Western view of the human body because he's an Indian fella who was born and raised in India um, and with a Western education. So he, he has, I think, a lot of valuable insights into, insights into the human condition. And additionally, um, there's something I agree with him on and he mentioned and I completely forgot about it. Uh, years ago, when I was doing my MA, I was doing a lot of research into the supernatural human existence. And one of the points that struck me was that medicine, modern medicine is, and that's again, he, he reminded me of that. Modern medicine is not, not necessarily the answer to everything. Um, because it doesn't address a lot of the human needs that we have when we're sick. Um, modern medicine does, did not solve a lot of the problems that we were facing, you know, a lot of the pandemics, um, the, the, the deaths, the black cholera, the, the, you know, the, the massive extinction of humans due to, to, due to viruses was not saved by modern medicine, but rather by engineering. And this is hard to believe, but basically... Um, when there were, you know, when dirt was spreading across Europe because people were unable to, um, basically, I remember, okay, there was, there's a number, there's a bunch of them, I can't remember of them because I'm stupid like that, but there's one example when uh, the Black Plague, I think, was taken over. Uh, Paris is a perfect example, okay? People were stashing bodies in one place and basically the dead were polluting, you know, the, the bodies were decomposing and they were, it was polluting the main water, uh, the drinking water in the city. And people, more people were becoming sick, which caused a further spread of the plague. And so people were dying in like thousands and millions even. I don't know what the numbers were, but there were a lot of deaths caused from a lack of sanitation. And engineers... Engineering stepped into place and basically people decided to, to move the bodies and fix the city's infrastructure which allowed for the dirt to be moved away um, and prevent more 
disease, there's more spread of disease and more death. So it wasn't modern medicine, it was engineering. And this is one of the points that Dr. Shiva, this guy, talks about. Um, and I think a lot of people are not aware of it, that it's not modern medicine. So I, I posted the link for this video, for this, uh, this website um, below my video. Go check it out, man, because it's... Uh, I think my dad sent me this link. Sorry, my dad sent me a link to an interview with this fella on another program. Um, and I listened to it and... You know, I had an argument with my dad uh, because I just didn't want to listen to, to more crap. My dad is a bit paranoid recently. I don't know what, but, <laughs> but anyway, somebody else sent me this link and another person, I sent this, you know, the other interview with my friend and then he, he sent me this link again. So this Dr. Shiva fella is making rounds on different um, channels. Uh, and so I'm just going to play a little I bit. I don't see a public emergency being a thousand people. They're just this percent Many right now where a bunch of parents are being told by the educational department that the answer doesn't matter anymore. Math doesn't matter. Let's look at the math. Okay, in the worst pandemic, uh, Ari, right? And I want to leave the Spanish flu out of it because that was done during a war, okay? 50% got it. There were many other factors. We didn't have sanitation, uh, uh, nutrition, vitamin A. So, so, But if you look at the six major pandemics, what was it? What was the total infection rate among a population? About 15%. Okay. What was the death rate? Well, the death rate was around 0.3% among those that got infected. Let's even say that this gets doubled. Let's double it. And let's assuming doubling would be what? Okay. 30% of the United States, 90 million people or 90, whatever, uh, 99 million people get it. Let's keep it 90. And let's say we double the infection rate to 0.3 to 0.6%. By the way, there's no population where 100% people have ever gotten anything, okay? Well, let's assume 0.6%. Well, you get to 540,000 people who die, okay? And let's put that in context. You, now you have 540,000 people um, who are dying from this event. Well, how many people die from heart disease? About 600, 700,000 people, okay? How many people die from cancer today? Well, about 500,000 people. How many people are dying from medical errors every day, which is the number third cause of death is 440,000 people. How many people are dying from prescription drugs killing you? That's about 200,000 people. In fact, if you add up the 200,000 prescription drugs and the medical errors, that's six, you're more than people dying from heart disease. I haven't seen a state of emergency, which frankly should be called for that. I haven't seen a shut down our economy for that. I haven't seen a, the economy being shut down by all these MDs who so care for or the public health for the massive increase in obesity rates or the fact that 54% of kids have autoimmune disorders. I don't see a public emergency being called for this at all. But yet, we call a public emergency. How many people have died now in the US? What are the actual numbers, Ari? I don't you know, know what they are? I think a few thousand. A few thousand. So now you project to 100,000 dying, right? Because Fauci, fear-based pharma Fauci, who bases his entire existence on fake science, needs big numbers. He needs big numbers. I have friends who are working at different hospitals, small ones, there's no one there. So it almost seems like they're moving this to the big hospitals to get nice video shots. That's what it looks like to me, okay? And then... Okay, I'm gonna stop there because there's a lot of stuff that you may or may not agree with and wonder, but the, the point that he made was that the numbers uh, are questionably justifiable. And from the very beginning, I kind of wondered about that too. And I'm not an, you know, not an ex. I don't want to say I'm not an expert because I'm like far from that, right? <clears throat> but it just, it, it looked like the, um, I think you may have said that as well. Um, the cure is worse than the disease itself. You know, like we're locking down cities and people are losing their livelihoods because you know, and yeah, th this is where the, where the difficulty comes in because, you know, it's easy for a person like myself who has not been directly affected by this, say, you know, to dismiss it and say like, oh, it's not a big deal. Like only a thousand people or shit, it only 230 people died out of 50 million, right? If it was one of my, um, my close family members who, who was one of the 231 affected, then I'm sure that my 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 lookout would be very different 
But it would be the same thing if somebody in my family was dying from cancer. I would be looking at other people who dismiss cancer and say, oh, only a small percentage you know, of patients die from cancer. Um, so it's not that important. But if it was my, my family member who was dying from cancer, I would, be, have, I would have a very different lookout on that. And it's the same thing with this. But yet, like he says, there is no state emergency called for anything else like, you know, uh, accidental deaths because of medicine or, or complications during surgeries or, or heart disease and so on. But the fact that it's trumpeted all over the media and like this fear is being fed into people and people are just made to literally jump to the will of this boogeyman, as the woman called it, you know, this is what's very scary. That's what scares me. People are very easily controlled and and if if it is a manipulation then oh my god we are such fucking sheep we are so easily manipulated we jump at shadows it's shocking it's scary man uh neil pusan unlike previous pandemics people can travel very easily right with the exception of the 14-day quarantine right <clears throat> once the economy reopens the more healthy people you have, the more jobs will be filled. Why is Trump not getting any blame? I, I don't know. I, Trump, I have no idea. You know, um, so just to, just to close up this video here, this video, the link to this video and the website is posted below this video. So if you're interested, check it out. Um, I would recommend watch him. Uh, whether you disagree or agree or disagree, um, he says some things that should make you think um, and that's important, right? It's important to think uh, outside the box. These are question marks that are posted in, in my thumb. Um, it's, it's um, yeah, Trump, uh, I don't know. Uh, Trump, I, I, I have, I don't know. Dude, I don't know what to say about Trump. I know people who hate him. I know people who love him. Um, <clears throat> and sometimes I listen to Trump and he sounds like a dummy. Um, but he's always been calling the media, you know, fake news, this, fake news, that. And news is full of shit. Okay, let's start with that. News are biased to the max. All of them, CBC, CNN, BB, BBC, who's, who the hell is CBC? BBS, Fox are the worst. Right now they're biased in favor of, of Trump, which is weird, I guess. But, um, you know, Trump, um, there was another video today I saw from a physician saying, what's the drug that Trump was trumping about um, um, that is supposed to be the thing to, to save you from coronavirus? What was the, tr the drug? Please remind my, refresh my memory here. Uh, Yongo says, I don't think it's manipulation. The elites have been hit hard to, too by the pandemic economic downturn. <clears throat> have they? Have the elites been hit hard? How hard can you be hit from a month of no work when your net value is several million dollars? and you don't get to pay, get paid, you know, other millions of dollars for those two months that you don't work because you don't have any movie deals. How hard can you be hit? Honestly, I don't, I honestly don't think so. I don't think that's a valid statement. The elites have not been hit by this at all, at all. As a matter of fact, a lot of the elites like uh, Trevor Noah, nothing against Trevor Noah, but he just went on YouTube and that's another fucking thing that infuriates me. Celebrities. Fuck celebrities. When you're a celebrity, you can do whatever the fuck you want on TV, post the stupidest goddamn videos on YouTube, and people swarm in just to watch your stupid ass do stupid shit nobody cares about. If a normal, regular Joe goes and does the same thing, everybody ignores it. Nobody even knows it exists. But you have a dumbest fucking celebrity come on and eat noodles with their fat bellies hanging out and slurping everywhere and everybody watch. It's on national television for fuck's sake. It makes me so angry. 
I'm not talking about me because I spend a lot of time making the videos and I get very little love. I get love from people like such as yourself, but from the YouTube community, from the algorithm, fuck all. But then you've got these jackasses doing nothing in terms of content creation. They come on, they giggle, they eat fucking food and say how good it is and they get thousands of views and so much attention it makes me want to vomit. Okay, so the elites are not hit by this at all. So Trevor Noah um, had a TV channel, he gets paid very well for that and now he just moved it into his apartment. Now he doesn't have to be sitting in a fucking studio, he doesn't have to wear makeup, he doesn't have to sit through hours of excruciating makeup consumption and, and dress up. He sits comfortably on his couch and he still produces content and he still gets paid. No, the elites have not been fucking hit by this at all. Hydro... Huh? Hydro... Quanine? How do you pronounce that? Hydro... <laughs> Hydroxychloroquine. Shit. Yeah. Okay. Hydroxychloroquine. Okay. My wage earning is down by three quarters. Yep. Uh, somehow Trump got that right. Yeah. Right. Somehow he did. And yet he was he was ridiculed for it. And now physicians. Today I saw a video by a physician saying the same thing. Also, what he said was. By there was another. Uh, thing that was added to Schweppes tonic water. Apparently that stuff in there, I guess the, whatever produces the bitterness, is very good at defeating or fighting COVID. Uh, this is again like this, you know, witchcraft stuff, but check it out. Buy a bunch of Schweppes water, man. Look it up. I, I just saw the video today and I wish I had it, I had it ready. Um, so, uh, Yeah, who's it? Was it uh, uh, Pusan? Pusan Neil Pusan says th by three quarters. And so, Neil, let's just put this into perspective, right? Let's say you make a good wage of ten grand as an English teacher uh, doing private. You make ten grand a month. Let's say it's possible. I've seen it done. Um, and that gets cut by three quarters, which means you're making about uh, two and a half thousand, right? Well. If you're the elite, you're making 10 times as much on average. If you're the elite, you're making a minimum of 100 grand, um, okay, not a month, but, but a year. So, okay, wait, <laughs> let me recalculate that. Um, you'd be making a lot more a month than 10 grand. Let's say you're making 30,000 a month, which is probably a, a pretty... Um, What's the word? Pretty generous estimate. Like it's not very big. Cut that by three quarters. Let's make it 40 uh, to make it simple. $10,000 a month. You're telling me that doesn't make your life comfortable. That's basically the salary that you're struggling. You're working your ass off to work. So no, I don't agree that elites have been hit. They have not been hit at all. Uh, the only thing that they experience is a drop in a couple of million and so they make less, you know, fewer millions than they were before, but they're still making over a million a year or whatever the heck they make. It's the little businesses. It's clearly that this is killing off the middle class, okay? It's a, it's a siphoning of wealth from the middle class um, and basically creating a divide between the super powerful and the super rich, rich and the poor. Because now you have the middle class the little businesses like mine and many others who are struggling and basically who were busting their asses to build this and now it's collapsed now it's all the cash is siphoned down out and who knows we are going to try to reopen and run and hopefully with some luck basically we'll be able to overcome it my wife does not see it that way man we're, we're in some serious, in a serious predicament and I don't know if we're going to be able to recover. Um, yeah, so these middle classes, a lot of them will disappear. They will go back, they'll be reduced to lower middle class or, or just no middle class at all. And so that middle class is, is being thinned out and most of that money, where does the money go? Where is it going to go? Right?
figure it out. It's not going to go to the poor class, is it? Let me have a look at the comments here. Trump got that right. Hydro, I still, I can't pronounce that word, man. Trevor has that right. I'm talking about financial leads. Trevor Noah just is the court jester for them. Yeah, sure. Uh, I can work in outpatient, but has many side effects. Oh, okay, true. QT prolongation, especially cardiac. Uh, quinine, good against malaria. Uh, Bruno says, it is hard on the liver, so you need to take zinc. Yes, to ame ameliorate the side effects. Maybe this was from you, Bruno, who posted this. Quanine, I think, yeah, you're right. I think quanine and zinc, yeah. So I guess that's, that video was posted by Bruno then, right? Quanine and zinc, because it's exactly the same combination. So um, again, I wouldn't jump to, to jump the gun, jump the ship for it. I would do some research first. Uh, my first instinct is to like, whenever I read something like that, I go to Wikipedia, I do some research, I find out on Google, I do some... Uh, academic research to find out what these things do. How do they react in your body? Um, and obviously it would take a lot more than just like reading stuff randomly. Um, but that's what I would do. Uh, Bruno, I run business too. I know it is hard. Yeah, <clears throat> you know, it's super hard, man. But it also depends on the kind of business you run. Because my wife's friend runs a business and He's been selling stuff and he's making like literally he's over the past uh, two months, he made close to $200,000. Seriously, selling stuff that people were desperate to get masks and other things. So depending on the business, am I still hiking? Um, well, I try to get some hikes in as much as I can, man. Um, I went hiking last week and Saturday with a friend. It was a very good hike, very enjoyable. Um, but other than that, I don't hike, not because I don't want to or I'm afraid. I don't, I really don't care. I, I yeah, I, I've been walking around without a mask. The only time I put it on is when my wife starts freaking out that I'm scaring off all the customers. You know, people get all giddy or uh, not giddy. <laughs> people get all skittish when they see me without a mask like oh my god people are not gonna send their kids here when you're walking around without a mask right because you can spread it so I wear a mask um, to look presentable when I go out for a hike I, I abandon it and as a matter of fact like my buddy and I were walking um, through the forest we didn't wear, we weren't neither one of us were wearing masks and the Koreans many Koreans who we came across were like you know Bangapsumida, hello nice to meet you and all that stuff um, people were friendly, nobody made comments, um, so, Neil, I like, I hike locally, uh, the local hill every few days for exercise. Neil, where are you uh, based, man? Where are you located? Um, hit me up. If you hike in the neighboring area, then hit me up and, and, you know, we'll come up with a time, we'll go hiking, man. I love hiking. We've done, like last year, we've done a lot of hikes. We hit a lot of the mountains in Onyang. We went to, uh, shit, where do we go? Uh, Gaji Sun. Um, oh, man, I don't know. I've got the videos posted, man. I've, I've done a uh, um, walk down the memory lane on, on video of like three or four parts of Munsu Sun. Um, and uh, all the hiking videos that I've done over the past summer are on my channel as well, so you can check those out. I don't remember the Gidi Sun, Gaji Sun, I think. I can't remember, not Gidi Sun. Anyway, uh, Guangan. Oh, sh where's Guangan? This is Seoul, man. <laughs> I tried to get Winston Sterzelon, aka Serpenza. Ah, yeah. Like, he would agree to come on my channel, man. Hit him up. Send him a message, let him know. I messaged him one a long time ago when I posted a video about um, about uh, China. And I messaged, I, left, he, I don't know if he commented on my video or I messaged, I left a comment on his video saying that this is what's happening, he responded. But you know, he's a big YouTuber. Um, so I don't think... Uh, I don't think he'd be interested in coming on. He's got like three channels of his own, man. He's based in the States. He's a busy dude. You know, he, he runs three channels. Well, 
him, his buddy, Lao Y, and they have a two, one channel combined. So basically, like they, they work on three channels. So, uh, yeah. <sighs> Young Namals, man. Guangan is in Busan. Oh, okay. Guangali. Oh, like Guangali. Okay. <laughs> Duh. Yeah, you would figure. Live in Korea, title, and doesn't know where Guangan is. Whatever. Whatever. Young Namals, yeah, are awesome, man. Well, Neil, man, if, if you're interested, uh, like I said, hit me up, man, uh, wherever you are. Um, message me, if you could message me on Facebook, man, I'm sure we could figure it out sometimes and like coordinate some kind of hike. Uh, I've got a good friend, he loves hiking too. He's, he's went on his own excursions. He's, he's walk, walking all the time. He works, walks every day from, from home to school and he's um, to work rather and he's on a daily mission to go hiking so holy moly man i've been talking for two hours good workout i don't work out but my freaking <coughs> abdomen has gotten a beating tomorrow i'll be sore as hell <laughs> all right fellas thank you for tuning in uh this is gonna be it that's the conclusion um i'm sorry about the unfortunate absence of um the promised guest speaker we did not appear. People make promises and then they don't stick with them. What are you going to do, right? What are you going to do? I hope to get some more speakers. I'm going to message Serpent ZA. Why the heck not? I'm going to reach out. I've reached out to some other big people. Um, usually you don't hear people from people like that, particularly when you're a tiny little channel like myself, you know. Um, but I will message him and I don't know. Just see what happens, yeah? I've had Sharu now on here, 75,000 subscribers out of Seoul. He's gone now, he's moved to Japan. Um, I've chatted with another YouTuber that's based in, in Korea, uh, but he focuses on, on food specifically. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, you know, I'm kind of a lone ranger because of time constraints. If I had more time, if I had more subs, I was going to actually... Uh, profiting from YouTube, I would be able to spend a little bit less time working, possibly here at the Hog One. Or well, right now, it's impossible because I gotta, you know, I gotta bust my bones to make this business live again, man. All right, Ben, uh, Bruno, sorry. All right, Bruno, have a good night, man. Enjoy the rest of your week. Everybody else, if you're new here, make sure to hit that subscribe button. If you manage to stay here with us for the till the end of it, holy macro! Two hours. If you're just tuning in, uh, you know, hit us likes and we'll see you in the next one. Cheers. Love you guys. Thanks for sticking with, with me, with the channel through the hard times. We'll catch you in the next one. Good night. Have a good weekend.